Welcome back. Uh, TS is a coward, so now I'm making videos on his channel. Uh, I'm Gibbs, or Blackens on YouTube, and I'll be showcasing a, a map that we made for Glarthford, the, the map that we're working on. Um, that I probably shouldn't have said map twice there, uh, but it's a map in the advancement screen. Uh, it displays where you currently are in the world, uh, and it updates in, more or less in real time. Uh, TS has done all the work for this. Uh, but I sort of came up with a theory uh, on how it will work. Uh, it sort of just assembles the map out of three layers, and I'll showcase that here in a sec. But as you can see, uh, if I move around the, the terrain, you can see my position move. The, you can sort of watch the map appear in real time there. Uh, that's just so it doesn't glitch out, because we have to do some really finicky stuff to make this actually work um, without having to do, like, 70 over 70,000 advancements for to, to get this to work. We actually only have 256 advancements uh, to display this screen that you're seeing, and I'll talk about how that works here in a second. <coughs> uh, but this updates in real time. It sort of moves around with you. Uh, there's a little purple dot where you're at, and it's, uh, it's pretty neat. It's nice to have something that shows where you are in the world, uh, and I will go ahead and uh, show how this works. I'm going to go over to my little demo area, which is off in this direction. And um, let's not talk about that here for a sec. Uh, basically, this is assembled from uh, three layers. Um, and each layer is comprised of sort of... Uh, there's the topmost layer which is a bunch of horizontal slats, which you can see right here. <coughs> uh, and I'll talk about exactly what the hell is going on here in a second. Uh, then there's a second one, which is some vertical slats, and then the third one, which is the full map image. So uh, sort of what that looks like is I have my background image here. This is what this is the entire map. Then we have the vertical stripe. And then we have our horizontal stripes that get placed on top of that afterwards, which then generates where you are in the map uh, like that. Now, what's going on here with this model and why we have 128 horizontal slats that are angled up is because with 1.15 rendering changes, um, models that are in the GUI, so let me go ahead and give myself the item itself, Real quick, if you look here, this is nice and bright, but if we just had a flat image, or a, a flat model that's just perpendicular to your view, uh, it's pretty dark. And if you've worked with models uh, in 1.15, you, you've probably seen that. Uh, you can actually see a direct, uh, sort of that directly right here with the terracotta items, <coughs> the top face is the brightest, then we have the left face is the next brightest, and then we have that dark face on the back there. Uh, pretty much the entire model would be darkened as much as that face right there uh, if we didn't do this whole angling up thing that we're doing. Uh, so that's sort of a, a hurdle that we had to, to bypass to get this to work. Uh, also having 128 horizontal lines here helps with making the model basic, <coughs> excuse me, basically each line has its own texture ID, and instead of having a bunch of different models with just one slat removed in them, or three in our case, because we have um, our, oh, it's missing for me. Uh, basically, our map is three wide. Let me actually go in adventure mode so you can see it. Uh, basically, our map is, uh, or each icon here is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, three wide. Uh, that's just so it's more visible, because otherwise it would be a fairly small dot on the map, and it would be hard to see exactly where you are in the world um, if it was only one pixel. So, uh, as I said, we make it three pixels wide so it's more visible. Um, now, we actually don't generate this with advancements within the main screen here. Let me actually turn off the resource pack. I think I've... Actually, one last thing. Um... If you look at this and how it's rendering, um, we have these angles, um, but you don't actually see them. It doesn't sort of make a sawtooth pattern on the side of the texture, and that's because uh, stuff in the inventory actually uses uh, orthographic projection. Um, 
the perspective isn't really rendered. It's just a flat uh, image, no perspective. It's not one point perspective, so there, there's no distortion uh, based on how far away it is from the center or anything like that. So it's <coughs> it's actually pretty helpful uh, that we don't have to do any weird stuff to hide any sawtoothing that might occur. So having that orthographic projection does help quite a bit. Um, but I'm actually going to turn off the resource pack and talk to you about how this is actually generated and why we only have to use um, 256 advancements, 128 for each line. Uh, as you can see, our main advancement tab here is just two advancements that are separated by a pretty sizable gap here. And that's just so you don't uh, see whenever you first open the advancement inventory or the advancements menu, uh, your cursor starts out at the center of the screen. And if we just had one advancement here, it would darken the entire map quite a bit. So we have a, a, a spacing here. And then we have our three layers as tabs up here. And that's so we don't have to have... Um, like 70,000 advancements. Uh, we only have 256 advancements for over 16,000 possible positions on the map. Uh, the actual math that goes into it is just sort of an offset calculation. The scaling of the map texture is uh, 128 and the entire terrain area is 256. So it's just a scale down of two after we determine the, the offset. Uh, it's just some simple math. But yeah, that's sort of uh, how that works. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I will catch y'all next time.